The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Jay Strovey here with realagriculture.com and we're here at the NMAX Centre in Lethbridge, Alberta at the Alberta Combine College and I'm joined by Clint Yerke of the Canola Council of Canada. Today we're talking disease. So uh, let's get a little bit of an um, overview. What are we looking at? Well, it's, it's, it's still up in the air actually in terms of what the, what the diseases are actually uh, going to, to be. Uh, we know that early season it was, it was very dry through all the, the prairies and so we didn't see as, as much seedling diseases as, as what we've seen in the past but you know we didn't see all that much emergence as well. It was, it was pretty variable uh, the, the crop that came out of the ground. But now that uh, we've seemed to have entered into a wetter cycle for much of the prairies um, uh, over the last four weeks, uh, the potential for those diseases to start manifesting themselves is certainly increasing. So we're talking about like blackleg and sclerotinia and clubroot, those are, are, are three big ones. And so um, whether or not they're going to manifest really comes down to, uh, to the individual field and, and what the grower practices have been up to this point. So what we're trying to do here at, at the Combine College is is uh, getting growers to think about diseases, uh, what their impacts are, because ultimately those diseases will affect the, the harvest uh, process. The more disease you have, the more variability you're going to have in that crop canopy, and that's going to affect um, how the, the maturity of the crop is, uh, the variability of that maturity, and, and even how that crop flows into the combine and how much seed is retained in the combine. So getting a better handle on those diseases does make for a better harvest experience. So what does that mean in terms of um, mid to late season scouting in fields? Yeah, so the um, right now the, the type of scouting that a, a grower needs to do is, is to consider whether or not sclerotinia is, is going to be a problem. We had a dry start, so that usually means that the sclerotia that are in the soil uh, the risk of them actually producing the little fruiting structures that look like mushrooms almost, uh, called apothecia, and those things start spitting out uh, ascospores. The risk of that is reduced when, it, when it's dry. But we've had about three to four weeks of, of fairly wet uh, soil uh, situation, and what that means is now those apothecia are starting to produce those, uh, those uh, ascospores. So the real question is really whether or not those ascospores are going to happen to coincide in that 20 to 50 percent flowering stage in an individual field. If they do, we have wet crop canopies. It's really good for the disease. So if that fungus is there in that wet canopy, we could potentially have some sclerotinia issues. We're hopeful that, that those spores actually don't arrive until later on in the season and then we can kind of get past that, that infection period. So. So that's the, the kind of scouting we should be doing now. So growers should be considering going into fields, assessing how wet that canopy is. And there are genetic tests that, that are available where you can take uh, uh, canola flower petals and send them to a lab, and they'll run a, a DNA test to determine whether or not those, that, that fungus is actually on those petals. If it is, and you got wet crop canopy, it might be a good idea to actually protect that with a fungicide. So that's the scouting that you want to be doing right now. Uh, other scouting that can be happen is, is when once we get closer to the swathing time. So what would we be looking at in regards to that? So uh, later on in the season once we get closer to swathing that's uh, when the plants are, are physiologically becoming a lot more mature. That's usually when the diseases symptoms really become manifest. We'll, we'll see like premature uh, dead plants in the field that could be in patches, that could be individuals. Um, Figuring out what, if you are seeing uh, individual or patches of plants that are dying, figuring out like what actually killed them is really important because then you can plan out what your management strategy is. Usually if it's in patches, like you have whole patches dead, that could be an indication that clubroot is there. So at, at swathing time, that kind of that 60% seed color change, pulling up plants, looking at the roots, if finding galls on it. Uh, unfortunately, that's not a really good situation, um, but then that means that you're, you're going to have to start managing uh, a lot more aggressively for club root in that individual field. If you're finding individual plants that have died, well then it could be blackleg, it could be sclerotinia, and knowing which one, was, was, which one it is helps you determine whether or not you made the right decision for, for protecting against sclerotinia. And if it's blackleg, then you, that helps you understand whether or not you made the right decision in your variety choice. Um, so that we ha we're in a really interesting 
time right now for, for managing diseases because we have genetic technologies, which we certainly didn't have five years ago, that can help us uh, actually pinpoint which, uh, which disease is present and even which pathotype or which race of that disease is present so we can start picking out which tools are going to work the best against that. So that's uh, kind of what we're doing here.